So you want to implement continuous integration with your Android projects. You want to be able to automatically build your projects all the time whenever Nuko reaches the master branch, for example, and maybe even create an APK file automatically. So all you have to do is from your terminal, push your code over to the remote repository and the remote repository can handle the build and maybe eventually your UI and unit tests and just generate an APK file. That is exactly what we're going to do throughout this video. I'm going to skip over the test. This is just going to be a very quick setup for continuous integration using GitHub Actions, by the way. So I am going to be using GitHub. GitHub is where I now have this brand new repository for an empty Android project. So all I did over here on Android Studio is create a brand new empty project, has no functionality whatsoever, but it is already over here on a remote repository. What I'm going to show you is the very simple setup of continuous integration using GitHub Actions. So once you have your project up here on the GitHub repository, all you have to do is navigate over to the Actions tab that is now up here. And in here, you might find an Android template in here for you to set up the continuous integration process. Even if you don't find it, it's going to be very easy. In fact, I am just going to set up the workflow myself. So I am going to just delete all of these new YAML code that was added to this main.yaml file. So this is the first important thing. We are going to be working with this YAML file and the YAML file has been created instead of a .github folder and a workflows folder. In here, of course, you could name this differently, but I am just going to leave the exact same name. The important thing is that this YAML file exists within this GitHub workflows folder path. So that is the important thing. Now in here, I am going to start with a blank slate. The first thing that I have to do is set the name for this workflow. So let's just say that this is going to be Android CI. So continuous integration. And after the name, the first thing that we have to set in here is when, when is this going to be executed? So for example, I may want this to execute every single push to a specific branch. So I can start listing all of the branches. And if I want more than one branch, I could here instead of square brackets, list all of the branches that I want, for example, master, and if I have the tester branch and so on and so forth, I only have the master branch. So that is the only one that I'm going to add in here. But in addition to push, I could also do the same thing for pull requests. So as soon as a new pull request is created, this workflow could also be executed. And I have a typo here, it's just pull request and the branches, again, this is going to be only in the master branch since it's the only branch that I currently have. So great, just like that, already my workflow is going to be executed whenever new code reaches via push or via pull request, the master branch. What exactly is going to be executed inside of this workflow, well, I can start defining a bunch of jobs. So the first job and the only job that I want right now is the build job. So I want my Android project to be built. And the very first thing that you will want to set with any job is on what server, what operating system is this going to run? Is it going to run on Ubuntu, on Windows or on Mac OS? And the, th the thing is that because we have Mac OS, we could do the exact same thing with iOS applications. As you know, we can only build our iOS applications on a Mac. So you could do that in here with GitHub Actions as well. But this is an Android application. So I am going to set that this runs on Ubuntu. So I'm just going to write here Ubuntu and I am going to use the latest version. So we could in here set a different version of the operating system. I am just going to use the latest available. And after setting that, I need to set the steps that are going to be executed throughout this build job. And it is in here where I want to build my code. Now, before I build my code, I need to check it out. So just like with Git, I need to check out the code and over here to the right, you're going to find the marketplace for all of the actions that have been pre-built and that are available in the marketplace for you to use. And among all of this, you're going to find a checkout action. This 
is the action that we would use to check out a Git repository at a particular version. So that is interesting because you could check out your code at a specific version if you wanted to build a specific version every time. But right now we just want to check out our Git repository and use it to build the Android project as we build any Android project from our own computers. So, and, and actually over, over here we have the documentation of how we would use this particular action. So what I need in here is to set perhaps a name of what this is going to be doing. The name is not necessary, but it is going to be helpful once this job is running. So we see the details of the process. So let me just name this checkout, just like in the documentation. And I have to set that I want to use that particular action. So let me just copy the name and the version, the latest version of this GitHub action that exists from the marketplace. Now, again, optionally, I could set in here some parameters with, like we have over here in the documentation, the repository, if I want a branch or a tag or a shaft or a specific commit and so on. But I just want the latest version that has just been pushed or has just been, or has just created a pull request. I want to check that version out. This is enough. All I need is to set that I want to use that particular action. Once I have checked out this Git repository, I can build my Android project. And what do we need to build Android projects? We need Java, of course. So what I can do in here is use another GitHub action that exists in the marketplace that is called Setup Java. And we have a bunch of them. I am going to be using the one by actions by GitHub themselves. This one that has kind of like the verified tick in there. So by using the documentation, I can set a name in here that is going to set setup JDK. And this is going to be using these actions setup Java with the newer version 1.4.2 right now. And in this case, I could be setting a specific Java version. So let me just use Java version 1.8. So now we have Java. The last thing that we need is to build a project using Gradle, for example. So what I'm going to do is just build with Gradle and I am going to run a specific command. I already have Java here ready, so I don't need to use any action. I can just execute any command that I would run on my own terminal. So I can execute Gradle build like I would on my own computer and my project is going to build. And just like it would build my own computer, some artifacts, some new files are gonna be generated, including the APK file. And because I've already built under applications in the past, I know the exact location of those generated APK files. So I could just go to that particular folder path grab the APK and upload it somewhere for me to eventually download it or eventually send it to the continuous delivery process. Let me know in the comments if you want to see a video about that. But if I want to access that APK just to make sure that it is actually, actually successfully generated, what I could use is another action that is called upload artifact, upload a build artifact, the one that I have right here and the latest version is version 2.1.4. So right after building my code, I am going to upload the APK file using, of course, this action right here. Actions, upload artifact, and the latest version 2.1.4. And notice that what we need is the artifact name and the path, of course, very, very important. So I am going to set here name that is just going to be app and the path that as in any Android project that is going to be inside of app, inside of build, inside of outputs, inside of APK, inside of debug, at least because I am currently not building for release. Eventually the path would change, but let's just use debug right now. And we know that the name of the APK by default is app-debug.apk. So now what this action is going to do is go to this path, grab this file and upload it. And we're going to take a look at exactly where is it going to be uploaded to in just a second. But now everything is ready inside of this new JAML file. 
all I have to do now is start committing these new files. So I am going to set this to create main.jaml and let's just commit directly to the master branch. This is an example after all. As soon as I commit to the master branch, one of the triggers from this particular file is triggered. I have pushed to the master branch. There is a new commit instead of the master branch. So the action should be executing and we'd see it right here. In the actions tab from this particular Git repository, I can see the name of my commit and I can see all of the jobs that are currently being executed. Currently, and of course we only have one, so that is the only one that we see. But inside, we're, we're going to see all of the steps with the corresponding names that we set inside of the file. We see checkout, we see setup JDK, we see build with Gradle, we eventually will see upload APK and some additional steps that are needed, you know, set up the job and post setup JDK and post checkout that are part of the actions that we are currently using. So here it is, B Gradle has succeeded, upload APK has succeeded apparently, so everything succeeded in here. Now, where do we find this artifact? Well, in fact, you can see it over here. We can see artifacts, there is one, and there it is our app artifact, that is the name that we set from within the Jamal file. And also if we navigate back to the list of actions and we click on this latest action, the only action that we have, we can see the artifact right here as well in this run. So what exactly is inside of the artifact? Well, it's actually the APK file. If we were to click on this link, it's actually going to be downloaded and we can just open the finder to take a look at what exactly was downloaded. It was zipped, so it could be downloaded. But notice that if I open it, we're going to see the APK file. That is it, that is our APK file. So that is really everything that we needed to do. We have now set up our own continuous integration process, very simple continuous integration process. Just an example really here with GitHub Actions. Of course, eventually you could go back to that JAML file and continue editing it and also execute your UI and your unit tests in here and sign the APK, make sure that it builds for release and eventually the APK is already signed, ready to be distributed through the Play Store, for example. But this is the very first step that you needed to do. From now on, of course, if I were to go back here to my ID and I don't know, let me just in here the main activity instead of using this replace with your own action, let's just set this to wow, this is my own action. So this is brand new functionality. You know, I've made a lot of changes, so I better push them over to the master branch directly. Of course, that is not what you should usually do, but this is an example. So I'm just going to git commit in here dash am my own action and that is it. So git push directly to the master branch. And of course I need to pull first everything that is new in the master branch, that JAML file essentially. Sure, that is okay. But once I have everything from the GitHub repository, I can finally push. And we know that because we have just pushed to the remote, that means that the action should be triggered as well. So if we navigate back to the GitHub Actions tab, in just a second, we should see a new action be triggered because we now have Android CI in here. Yes, here it is, our own continuous integration process already set up just Automatically, after just a couple of seconds, here it is, the brand new action be triggered. Of course, this is con this is still the Android CI workflow. That's the only one that we currently have and its own job, only the build job that we currently have. And eventually, this should, of course, hopefully succeed. All I did was edit some string. So per perhaps this is enough for you to notice that indeed, just by pushing eventually to the master branch, you can have your very own continuous integration process already set up here with GitHub Actions. If you want me to upload a video about continuous delivery process just after this, I am thinking about uploading a weekly video. I don't know, it would be new for this channel, but I don't know, just let me know in case you even got this far instead of this video. I see you in the next one, I guess. Peace.